Good morning. Good to see everybody on this July day. Who celebrated July 4th? Anybody? Did you do fireworks? No? No? Well, guess in Burnhamwood, where I come from, they're still doing them. <laughs> Every night, I'm going, what is this? And part of it is because there's a dealer on the corner, and I think he's trying to get rid of his supply or something. <laughs> Anyway, it's good to be with you on this beautiful, beautiful day. Even with road construction, I had good directions to get here. So I was so glad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, let us then stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us with every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Let us take this time to come to God, confessing our sins and all that makes us weary. Renewing God. We are weary from responsibilities that society places in our minds. We are weary from a world where hate and brokenness abound, where we too have participated in brokenness and sin, casting judgment on others, speaking falsely, and trying to find our own way. Forgive us and provide us rest, that your grace, peace, and mercy may transform our minds and bodies to live in ways that share your love. Hear the good news. God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, showing compassion to all. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Join with me on the opening hymn, 520. Dearest Jesus, at your word, 520. Yeah. 
let us pray. Creator God, you shine your glory all around us. You reveal yourself in ancient stories and the give and take of common life. By the power of your spirit, come to us now, for you have called us in this place. We pray in the name of Jesus, our hope, our confidence, and your beloved Son. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. Good morning. A reading from Genesis. Labam, Rebecca's brother, re received a visitor who said, I am Abram's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going, I am standing here by the spring of water. Let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink, and who will say to me, drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her water jar on her shoulder. And she went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, Please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She said, The daughter of Bethel, Nahor's son, whom Micah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshipped the Lord, and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right hand or to the left. And they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebekah and her nurse, along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebekah and her maids rose up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Bir Lahanoi and was settled in Naab. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field, and looking up, he saw camels coming. And Rebe Rebekah looked up, and when she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, Who is the man over there walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. He took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. The word of the Lord. A reading from Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. 
For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And if you are able to welcome the gospel. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke to the crowd saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in a marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John neither came eating nor drinking, and they said, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look at the glutton and the drunkard, a man or a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank Father God of heaven, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and revealed them to the infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls." For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. And you may be seated. And I see we have one little one in the back. Would she want to come up or how, how does that go with her? Mama's got to come too. I think that's how it goes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> well, what's your name? I didn't hear that with the nookie. Oh, Emmy. Well, I'll have to get one of those. <laughs> You'll say I'm speaking German or something. What? What is this, Emmy? Do you know what that looks like? Croak, croak, croak. Who is that? Jumps. Likes the water. It's a silly looking little critter, so if she doesn't know, that I would understand. The frog? A frog. Do you like frogs? Yeah. Would you like to hold this one? Yeah? Here you go. Well, frogs have a story to tell us. Because if you take the letters F R O G, it spells what? Rely, fully rely on God. So it's like a message for us all to rely on God. And in our message today, we will hear words from St. Peter who talks about things like he said, no matter how hard I try to do good, it don't work out. But then I do what I shouldn't do. And who's going to have mercy on me? God. God? Yes, God will have mercy on you. Yes, on all of us, because try as we 
want to, it doesn't always work out. And then mama says, go do this, and you go, oh, later, mama. You ever do that? Later, mama. You do? <laughs> and mama might say that too, and you say something. Oh, later. But here we are today, enjoying worship. I hope that's the way it is. And you can, you can take your frog with you if you like to. Okay. Oh, it's your froggy. You get to name him, okay? All right. So God bless you. Let us have a prayer. Dear Lord, bless the children. Make them strong. Help them to grow up loving you. Amen. And here I'll give you this too. All right. You can go back with your froggy. I'd have been in big trouble if I'd had 12 kids. <laughs> I'd have been in big trouble if I really had 12 kids. <laughs> I had two. <laughs> All grown up. They do that, don't they? Kids just keep growing up. Sometimes we can't wait till, it's, till it comes to that. But other times we say, when, when has, where has the time gone? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray. Several weeks ago, on a Sunday morning, we had a wonderful rain in the Burnhamwood area. And I don't know how rain's been out here. Are you getting it quite a bit? No. Well, at that time, I just opened up the windows to hear the raindrops fall on the leaves of the trees. And then these words of an old hymn formed a new verse for me. For the beauty of the earth, for the raindrops from the sky, for new hope in drought-filled days, over and around us lies. Christ to thee, O Lord, we sing, praise and joy that this rain brings. As time went by, I got to thinking about people and that they may feel like they have periods of drought-like circumstances in their lives. Days where hope is like another person's story and answers come unceasing from un... Oh, my cell phone rang, but please excuse that. <laughs> and answers to our prayers don't seem to have resolved and every effort to change things for the better is abased. And running and writing this paragraph, I used a word that we don't use much, and the word is abased. Who knows what that is? It, it's, just, it's just not in our language, it seems. Not a common word. So I looked up on my cell phone on the Google, and I found Philippians 4.12, where Paul wrote, I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everything, everywhere in all things I have learned to be full and to be hungry, to both abound and to suffer great need. Paul learned how to cope with these, both these circumstances. And in the, in the words of scripture, twice it says, I know, I know. His mindset, his attitude, his composure, I'd say, came through his faith in Christ Jesus. In times he felt abased, probably felt like a river running dry in periods of drought. He knew he was held in Christ's love. From Romans 8, he would say, In all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And then again in Philippians, he would say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And he would further say in Philippians, for to me is to live is Christ. To live is Christ means that Christ is our focus, our goal, our chief desire. He is the center of our mind, our heart, our body, and our soul. Everything that we do is for Christ's glory. St. Paul's from Hebrews said, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a witness, let us also lay aside every weight 
and sin which clings so closely and let us run the endurance of the race that is set before us looking to Jesus the founder and protector of our faith who is our joy who who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross now reigns with God in heaven on his right hand but in our reading today it seems that Paul is struggling he says he was having a tough time well what could that have been for Paul was there pride or greed or maybe anger silent hidden life struggles that other folks may not know he was dealing with he'd say I'm trying to do right but then I do wrong and the right I should do I don't do it and the wrong I should not do I do that how am I going to find another way and he spoke from an abased circumstances a time he acknowledged the drought in his faith then out of this and realizing his wayward tendencies that cause further grief and anguish grace greets him in the realization that Christ stood in his in his place grace like rain from heaven there's an old gospel song and I like singing so I even like the old songs and my grandmother grew up with my grandma at home so I got all those old songs when she turned that old radio with a thousand buttons on and listened to that in the afternoons and I thought for sure she's going to hell because that wasn't Luther teaching Lutheran teaching <laughs> but I enjoyed the songs one of them is all to Jesus I surrender all to thee I freely give I will ever love and trust you in your presence daily live I surrender all I surrender all all to my blessed Redeemer I surrender all all to Jesus I surrender Lord I give myself to thee fill me with your love and power let your blessings fall on me all to Jesus I surrender now I feel the sacred flame oh the joy of full salvation glory glory to his name can you define a drought filled moment in your life and maybe there are some right now what would refreshing rain be in your circumstances the actual rain to to take care of the earth the words of God with his peace to walk beside you people have said God gives he takes our inabilities and gives us abilities he takes our problems we have no answers for and many times shows up just at the right time to turn, turn things around for the good, for the whole. And in those times, we can only say, surely the Lord has done it. I have a friend that's had cancer for a long time, and recently she went through ser a series of PET scans and all these other tests that, that happen. And she called me or she texted me this week, I'm in remission, it is gone thank you for your prayers and in those moments surely she probably would say surely the Lord has done it for nothing she could do with the circumstances was to just live through them but God who has answers freely gives in abundance even in the times we say our cup overflows what is the greatest gift we can receive? Do you ever think about that? The greatest gift we can ever receive? I remember one time standing in the milk house on our dairy farm, and my dad says, you know, and you're growing up, Eddie, you might want to have a lot of stuff. You might, and it's all, you know, it's good. Lots of stuff is good. You need a house, and you need food and stuff. But if you have Christ, if you don't have Christ, you don't have anything. But if you have Christ, 
you have everything. How can we recognize God's message as it like was read today? Does it come from the practice of hearing the word like we heard this morning in years of faithfulness? Or like in an answer to prayer comes as raindrops from heaven to relieve a drought-filled situation in our life? Maybe you would say with me, I know what it's like to be abased, to be brought low. Where try as I could, I couldn't get it done. It didn't turn out the way I wanted. And finally, you settle yourself down and you think about, it was your thought, your plan, your endeavors. And then setting all this aside, you may have, maybe have said, okay, you and me, God, you and me. The blessed way of peace and joy is in the place of saying, you and me, Lord. That is living the best life. Romans 8 would say to us, meanwhile, the moment we get tired of waiting, God's Spirit is right alongside us helping us. If we don't know how and what to pray for, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer in our worldless sighs and groaning, aching groans. He knows us far better than we know ourselves, knows our actual condition, and keeps us present before God. That's why we can be sure that every detail in our lives of love for God worked and in, works into something good. Our gospel gives us words we long for. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens. You living in drought-like circumstances. In times of drought with this land also. And he says, I will give you rest. A rest that speaks my word saying, my peace I give, not as the world gives I give to you. Do not be dismayed for I am with you. Take my yoke upon you, accept my love and grace bestowed and learn from me. For even in the darkest moments I am with you and you will find this rest. My yoke is easy. Being wrapped in my love is your perfect place. My burden is light. My way of living is a blessed gift by solely trusting in me. Lord, send down the gentle rain that only you can give. Rain down your grace and mercy and wondrous love to your beloved people gathered here today. And we pray all things in your holy name. Amen. I invite you to sing Christ Be Our Light 715.
Please stand if you're able as we confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation, and responding to God of grace would say, hear our prayer. Creator God, you reveal your goodness through all you have made, rivers and seas, plants and animals, endangered species. Prosper the work of conservation organizations, botanical garden zoos, wildlife sanctuaries. God of grace, Amen. abiding God, you desire that all the people of the world live in peace. Guide government leaders at all levels national, state, province, and local, to work for justice, mercy, and reconciliation, God of grace. You have brought us together to this day to worship around word and sacrament, encourage children in their learning and growing, and watch over those who are absent today. Lead us all to places of renewal and refreshment, God of grace. Mothering God, through the witness of the faithful departed, you reveal love in action. Embolden us by their example to build up a beloved community on all contexts that we encounter. God of grace. Amen. Healing God. For all who are in need of your tender care, we ask that you provide healing, comfort, and rest to all that are sick. Today we especially pray for Rita, Bev, Jim, Peggy, Carol, Don, Pat, Thea, Carol, Steve, and Skyler, and all others we name in our hearts. May your healing spirit be present in them, and may they find your peace, God of grace. We pray for all members of St. John's and all who pass through our doors. May you meet each one of us in ways that are life-giving and filled with your peace. Today we especially pray for this week's prayer ministry. For Terry and Sam, Ken and Shirley, Christopher and Andy, Abigail, Laura, Braxton and Josh, Brandon, Coy, Lucas, May each of them experience your loving presence today and all days. God of grace. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And I invite you to share the peace however you can. When Rebecca's family asked whether she would yield her life to God's purposes, she answered, I will. Every day each of us is challenged by that question. May the offerings we now bring symbolize our yielding.
Let us pray. Gracious God, receive these and all our offerings as presented in this service for the sake of your mission. May all creation be joined together as one in your love. In Christ we pray. Amen. We begin the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all peoples, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For those who are not able to come forward for communion, I'll bring communion to you. For everyone else, we're doing continuous communion and just follow the ushers to receive the bread from me and then um, the wine and the juice. You may be seated as we begin communion. <clears throat>
Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the refreshment you have received at your banquet table. We have received at the banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is the dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Now is the time for a few announcements. Um, I want to thank Shelley and Karen for the special music today. It just uh, adds so much to worship. Thank you so much. Um, what I think I'll do is have the blessing and then we'll have announcements, okay? May God's grace fill your heart to rejuvenate your soul. May Christ's yoke come upon you and give you peace. May the Holy Spirit breathe wisdom into you and give you endurance. And may the Holy Trinity guide your path this day and every day. Are there any announcements for today? We are a quiet bunch. <laughs> Lord, bring down the rain, right? Okay. If not, then let us have our sending song, Lord of All Hopefulness, 765. Lord of All Hopefulness. now in peace and serve the Lord. <laughs>